That's Jane O'Brien. Uh, joining me now to discuss the president's speech is Daniel Perez, a Republican member of the Florida legislature and the speaker-designate of the Florida House of Representatives. Daniel, thank you very much indeed for your time. Um, I, I just wonder what you made of the speech. I'm going to be honest, David. I thought the speech was phenomenal. I think we have two completely different candidates. On one side, in the DNC, I'm going to be very honest. I think that was more of a funeral than a convention. But over here in the RNC, it was a celebration. And on one side, we have a, a candidate and a president, like President Trump, that spoke about concrete facts. I mean, you heard it from him. He spoke about having the lowest unemployment rate amongst African Americans. And, and on the other side, his opponent was more abstract. A man that's been in office for 47 years, but facts is not what he spoke about. OK, he well, let, let, let's, Daniel, let's, let's focus on, on Donald Trump in particular then. You, you say facts, and I, I acknowledge there were a lot of facts in there. He did also say, um, for example, nobody will be safe in Biden's America. Well, that's not a fact, that's an opinion, isn't it? He said there will be a vaccine by the end of the year, possibly sooner. We don't know that until it's actually achieved and established. So it, it's a, a slightly more nuanced picture than that. But can I ask you this? Has he set up the scene really to say, above all, it's me or it's Biden? It, it's you know not just about the last four years. Uh, it's it's this or that. Well, of course, but but let's but let's look at what the present situation is here in the United States. The riots that the far left liberal cities are allowing in our communities are not being run by conservative Republican governments. They're being ran by the far left. That's a fact. And that's a fact of the same party that Joe Biden is representing in this presidential election. We cannot run from that. No, well, far, again, you, we'll, we'll avoid the terminology to a certain extent, whether it's far left or, or left or center left. I mean, it can vary. Uh, and, and there is an issue over law and order. And I think it's an interesting point here. Uh, it is very clear that Donald Trump supports uh, the, the need for law and order and the people carrying out that law and order. How do you balance, how do you manage, and I, d I don't know the answer to this, Daniel, manage a balance when we also see pictures of members of that law and order force shooting uh, black men, um, asphyxiating uh, others. I mean, that is a very difficult balancing act when it comes to an electoral campaign. David, that's a great point. And it's an important point to make. There is the rule of law, which is exactly what the United States was founded upon. And the rule of law is not gray. It is black or white and it's something that must be abided by. But at the same time, just because we can agree, or I can agree, that President Trump is a president of the rule of law, it doesn't mean that he doesn't acknowledge some of the situation and incidents that are taking place in our country. He spoke out on the George Floyd incident, and I don't think anyone in their right mind can say that the incident that took place with George Floyd should have taken place. I would say the complete opposite, and I know my Republican colleagues would agree. We wish that that situation would have never taken place. It should not have taken place. But it's important to differentiate the both because the president is an important figure when it comes to the rule of law, and he's standing by it. Defunding the police is not an option. It should never be an option. Well, there's a, there is a question mark about what defunding actually means and the extent it would go to. But uh, there's one other point I wanted to bring up, which is about the economy. We've had a pandemic which has obviously had a huge impact on, um, not least on the way in which uh, one might have hoped the economy would be going at this stage. But there are 30 odd million people taking an unemployment benefit at the moment who feel they've got a very rum deal here. How do you persuade them to, to stick with it? Look, this is a virus that no one could have predicted. Uh, the president in the White House could have been a Democrat, a Republican, or an independent, and our economy would have taken a hit. That being said, I feel way more confident that the economy, the economy is going to trend in the right direction, as it already is. I mean, look at our stock market, David. I mean, we're already trending in the right direction. And I personally feel more confident for our future and the economy's future to be in the hands of a businessman like Donald Trump than a career politician like his opponent, Joe Biden, who's been in office for 47 years with very few accomplishments alone in comparison to Donald Trump in the real world. Well, what, what is the message, Daniel, that's being uh, put out also by the event itself at the White House? Big crowd for Donald Trump there, um, all shoulder to shoulder, no masks in sight, for example. I mean, uh, clearly, there's a message there. Yeah, there's there's definitely a message. I mean, look, one, it's it's outdoors. 
and the CDC guidelines are continuing to change as our numbers get better with COVID. But I thought it was an important part and part that you brought up with one of your correspondents a couple minutes ago that said it wasn't your normal Donald Trump speech. And I wanted to point that out because you can tell his, his speech was a little bit more scripted than what he was used to. He usually is more amped up as he freelances his speech, but today was a little bit more scripted. Um, as he spoke before, a very small crowd in comparison to the filled arenas that he's usually used to. But I was not there on the floor today, so I don't know the exact precaution that they were taking at the White House. But I can tell you this, David. I was with the president a couple of weeks back, and before I saw the president, we had to take a COVID test, and so did everyone else in the room, because we were in confined spaces, and at the same time, we were wearing masks. So he is taking the precautions right. to make sure that he is safe and that the people around him are safe. Yeah, I just want to pick up on what you said there as well about the speech, and it was a bit more scripted, and he can be a real um, a performer off the cuff. Uh, do you think that rather actually sort of took away a little bit of his power to, to persuade and his, uh, the ability to get the message out? I, I don't believe so. I mean, I think there is a, a, there is a, a conversation to be had on how many truly undecided voters are there. At this point, I think Donald Trump's message is a very clear message. Is it not as amped up that we, as we are used to um, today in comparison to prior speeches? Sure, I'd agree it wasn't as amped up as he used to, but I don't think that that's going to differentiate the outcome of this election. I firmly believe that President Trump will be reelected in November. Right, but your, you, your belief seems to run counter to the, um, the opinion polls at the moment. Well, if we listen to the polls, the president wouldn't be the president today either. The polls had Hillary Clinton winning by a landslide in 2016. So if history is any indication of what November will look like, and according to the polls that you and I are both looking at today, I think President Trump is sitting in a very good spot. Okay, you, you're very buoyant. Daniel, thank you very much indeed for your time. Daniel Perez joining us there. Thank you.